All right, guys, we are back. We are doing a trade show on the Las Vegas Raiders. So let's jump right in. Would you go Derek Carr and the 106 or Dak Prescott? Dak Prescott, Dakota. Yeah. Unless I can turn that 106 to a 23, then yeah, I'll go Dak. Derek Carr and T. Higgins or Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson. Lamar. Yeah, is that close at all? No. You, You want the absolute hammer. Especially if our default is start ten, mm-hmm. then I think it's take the take the court take the stud quarterback that has a shot of finishing QB one overall and worry about the rest. What if it were Derek Carr, T. Higgins, and a twenty four first for Lamar Jackson? I mean, it's closer. I think start ten it still is leaves a little bit to be desired just because it's just kind of adding an extra asset. So you're going to immediately probably take that twenty four first and say, what can I add it to? Okay, so this is what the show is going to be like. We're going to go through all of the Raiders and do what we're doing right now. If you enjoy this content, please smash that like button, because that way we'll know we should do more shows like this. Straight up, Zach Wilson or Derek Carr? I'm going to take young Mr. Zachariah. Yeah, I actually think Zach Wilson is a player you can... I don't think you can pivot up to like the elite quarterbacks, but I think he has a little more appeal if I throw him in a trade than Derek Carr does. So I just think he's more of a live asset. So I would go Wilson too. Derek Carr and 223 first or Justin Herbert? Herbert. No, that's that's Herbert. Can't do it. Even the lovely 23 first. What? I love it on from there. Love the 23 first, but that's Herbert. And uh, yeah, it, it feels bad that he went in 110 in most Superflex rookie drafts. But hey, here we are. I think Herbert. Mahomes, Allen are worth probably the equivalent of like four first. 23, okay, maybe you're pushing it. Nobody probably has four first that's in a position to trade him to. You. But when you just look at it that way, we can talk about how much we like Derek Carr. You know, he's going to be QB 14 or whatever it is. But a lot of leagues, you try to send Derek Carr for a 23 first and it's declined. So it's like, yep. really, you're doing it for less than equivalent of 23 first, three of them. So I still go Herbert. All right, so let's move to his uh, to his new wide receiver, his shiny new toy, who's not uh, who's not new. Devontae Adams or Chase Claypool and the one ten. Ooh, I mean Chase Claypool. I loved the guy last year, and then he comes out and poops all over himself. So now every trade he's in doesn't feel great. Um, I'm not taking the one ten because I'm not taking Christian Watson or George Pickens. One ten, pretty- you could get James Cook too, Shane. I, I, at 110, I don't know, because if it's a bunch of sharps in that league, James Cook is off the board already. Yeah, I'd go I'd go Adams, but I think the part of with Adams is I, we're going to probably do some more trades on him. The market value is probably less than what is being thrown around in these trades. You throw him out there and you try to get, especially when the pick is on the clock or close to being on the clock, and the person really is like, oh, I have to get Jahan Dotson, or mm-hmm. I have to get James Cook, and you have to give me Chase Claypool, it's... Like on the clock, I just think that deal gets declined in a lot of ways. Devontae Adams or Joe Mixon? Honestly, yeah. I think I think I'd go Mixon just based on the probable. If I'm making that kind of trade, I'm probably looking to build a running back room in a certain way. And I think their questions are probably fair for both. Like a three year window at most for both, probably more like a one or two year window. And I'm not sure Adams. I think is going to be good, but I'm not sure he's guaranteed to be above replacement of what he's been before you know he may only be 19 points per game or 18 points per game and i'd rather have a running back like mixon that can score you know 16 or 17 yeah if mixon was just two years younger year younger i I could do it but i can't do it i'm trading both it's like trading a 30 year old wide receiver for a 30 year old wide receiver i'm not getting any discount there in age so what do you think Devontae adams is going to get uh target wise should we pen him in should we sharpie him in for 25 percent target share yes yeah I, I can't imagine it dips below that i'd say i mean if you say if you say 150 targets i think that's yeah. 145 to 150 assuming like 575 to 600 for the raiders and 25 percent for him less efficiency than what he had with rogers range of outcomes between like wide receiver five and 18 which is i mean that's good it's, it's stable, but I think he's more of like, he's probably closer to like Keenan Allen than he is like the wide receiver two or three overall. You know what I mean? Like he's probably like a low end wide receiver one and you don't want low end wide receiver ones when they're past 30. 
because you know where the value is going more of just like okay they better right. smash all the pressures on him smashing right away so if you were selling him what are you trying to uh what are you trying to get I i'm willing to take a hit um if i can get significantly younger at the, at the position if i can get four to five years younger I i'm willing to go down to like marquise brown level. but if i'm trading him i'm looking for a guy that's probably 26 27 years old at the oldest wide receiver two range if i can pull it off yeah i think the problem is like if i send you these trades and you're gaining back let's just say you're gaining back a year and a half or two years i send you Devonte adams you have to send me Mike Evans or Allen Robinson, but then you also have to send me a 23 second. You get that in your inbox. What, what does your mind immediately say? Well, not, I can squint and see where Mike Evans and Allen Robinson can produce the same as Devonte Adams, right? So why would I give you a second on top of that? Like that's where his market is. Even though you look at ADP and it's like, oh, Devonte Adams, wide receiver six, wide receiver seven. Then you go try to trade him and it's like, can I trade him for any of the guys under 26 that are within striking distance of ADP and it's like Waddle, Higgins, AJ Brown, they're all just smash declines, no chance. So it really is weird how like the startup ADP is here, but then you go to trade and he's like, he's a wide receiver too. Devonte Adams or a 24 first? I'm fine with the first. Yeah. I think that's one of those where I'm fine if I, especially if I have a couple 23 first and clearly those are not going to be transaction for Adam straight up. Like you're probably not going to send one, but you're also not getting one. So I think I could stomach going to the 24 first and saying, I'm just going to kind of eat giving up the pick. You know what I mean? But I, I think we don't appreciate how good Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback of all time for his weapons. Nope. He may not have the most Super Bowl rings, but you look at what he does just from an efficiency standpoint, elevating the players he's throwing the ball to. Like Derek Carr is a little bit above league average, but Aaron Rodgers is like 30% better than Derek Carr. So if you think the volume is going to go down for Adams, which 150 would be a reduction in volume, the quality is going down probably like 20%. So it's just really hard to do the math. And it's not like Adams was the wide receiver one last year. You know, it wasn't like he was 28 points per game or whatever. So it's just, it's hard to see the production go down. People are telling themselves the narrative, well, He's buddies with Derek Carr going back to college. It's like they can still be a great connection, but it's going to be more like, you know, 18 and a half, 19 points per game. It's not going to be like 23, 24, like people are expecting. Hunter Renfro or the 206? Renfro. 206. Um, I'm probably able to get Rashad White. I'll take Rashad White over him straight up. You don't think Rashad White will be there? I think the more comparable range would be David Bell, Jalen Tolbert. Wondell Robinson, Alec Pierce. Uh, like, I think that's probably the decisions you're making. I'm shooting all upside there. I got to hold on there, Hunter. Here's the thing with Renfro. He can earn targets. The other thing, the concentration is going to probably be in his favor. We just did some math, right? 25%, 150 targets for Adams. It's probably like 20% for Renfro. Oh, if he, so hits, he can get a uh, hundred if hits, targets, if he hits 20, no, I, I think he's going to get more than hundred targets. Oh, we're definitely on the opposite end of this. Spectrum. I think he's probably somewhere between 100 and 120, and he's square in the wide receiver 30, 20, 25 to 35 range. I think how many targets do you think Waller's going to say? I, I'm betting on the concentration. Give me Waller, like 23, 25 Renfro, 20 and Adams his 25. And then the rest just being spread around. I will say this, Hunter Renfro feels like the uh, the premier wide receiver handcuff in the league. Like if anything happens to Adams or Waller, um, like you just go. We, saw, we saw we saw what can happen. Hunter Renfro and Tyler Boyd are basically the same guy where they are one injury away and the offense stays as concentrated as it was from like, oh, wow, their market share just went up 15 percent because they're good enough to still earn targets themselves. They're just not as good as the other two guys that are by them. But I, I'm, with, I'm with Shane. I, I love buying Renfro and Boyd for that reason. I mean, I don't like to handcuff receivers, but like if I'm in a league where I can start three flexes and three receivers and those guys are already kind of within the threshold already where they're like my wide receiver six in a given week, they actually probably have more ceiling at their price. And you can pivot off of them or pivot off of guys that are maybe overvalued like Chase Claypool or Jerry Judy. Would you be shocked if Jerry Judy is outproduced by Hunter Renfro? You wouldn't be shocked when you're playing yeah. with these receivers that are like young wide receiver threes. You know what I mean? And it's like Renfro could be just wide receiver 30. So I, I like Renfro. I want to get more, more of Renfro. Uh, how about a positional pivot here? Hunter Renfro or Chase Edmonds? 
kind of like Edmonds there just because he is a running back. They kind of serve a similar purpose, you know, and Edmonds clearly doesn't probably have the shelf life that Renfro does. But the way I build running back rooms, I'm probably interested in getting more Chase Edmonds types at that price. Yeah, I probably, as I was going to say, I probably need Edmonds a lot more than I need Hunter Renfro, to be quite honest with you. So give me, give me, give me the running back. Same thing with Devin Singletary. Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Devin Singletary. I'm still higher on them than those people. Hunter Renfro and the 210 or Amon Ross St. Brown? I was on mute there, but it was St. Brown. A 210 doesn't really move the needle much. I think that's the drawback. If you move that pick up and you're giving me a two for one and you're giving me the 202, 203, or even you're giving me another shot at like Wandale Robinson and Renfro for Amon Ra, I would consider that. We would honestly probably take Amon Ra St. Brown to have seasons like Hunter Renfro did the last two years. We'd probably take that for like every year of Amon Ross St. Brown's career, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Josh Jacobs and Chris Olave or Brees Hall? Oh, Brees. 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 Straight up, Josh Jacobs or Antonio Gibson? I'm going Gibson. And I feel like I've seen Josh Jacobs ceiling. He had a ton of targets and he still was just, what, running back 12? So. He is the consummate running back to without yeah. really a range of outcomes to get any higher. Yeah. And he's missed a decent number of games in his career. He's missed a couple games every season. And he's another guy that seems like, I mean, I know this is just purely narrative, but it seems like there's three or four other games where you think he's going to be out for the game. And he's then he always banged up. Hobbles always back in up. and <laughs> seems like he's fine. But no, he's just one of those guys where like, I'm fine pivoting off of Jacobs. If I can go down to, Kareem Hunt, Miles Sanders, Tony Pollard, Chase Edmonds. I need a plus, you know, I need another piece. But like you, you honestly sit here and you look at like Chase Edmonds and Tony Pollard and Kareem Hunt, you're going, can they put up Josh Jacobs numbers? And the answer is probably yes. They just might need a little bit of luck, but it's probably like a 60, 40 bet. And I don't, I don't want to be holding an asset like Jacobs uh, when I can pivot down and get two things or two pieces. So Shane, do you like your boy, uh, David Montgomery over Josh Jacobs? Yes. What about you, Scott? Monty or, or Jacobs? They're, they're kind of the same thing, but Monty's shown a higher ceiling. And I think Monty is one of those guys where if Monty were to hit free agency, I do think someone would give him kind of like a Melvin Gordon type of shot. You know what I mean? Montgomery reminds me of like another James Conner mm -hmm. where someone brings him in and they give him like another, as long as he can sustain what he's been doing, he'll get another shot to sustain what he's been doing with the same workload. I don't think the market is going to see Jacobs the same way. How do you think uh, Zamir White and Kenyon Drake play into this? I don't care about Kenyon Drake. I think we've seen that dude clearly is not good. Zamir, I love Zeus. I think Zeus could definitely steal some work from Josh Jacobs, also because his nickname's awesome. The backfield still has some some settling to do. I mean, it's a McDaniels offense. I don't necessarily know if they have their James White. I guess the one path you could say for Jacobs is like he becomes the James White where they don't really use him. Because I think Kenyon Drake is going to make the roster. He's going to be there. He's going to annoyingly get, you know, 10% of the touches. So I don't think it's just going to be like he's out of the way. He's gone. You know what I mean? Unless he's not healthy. So I, I think maybe there's a path for Jacobs, but it's going to be a really, really narrow path. If he doesn't get that role, then it's going to be a, a role that's replaced as early as next year. Darren Waller or Dalton Schultz and the 112. Waller. It's close. I don't know. I'll have to get back to me, but I'll probably lean towards the Schultz side. Oh. Ooh. Oh. So here's, here's the interesting thing. If you put Darren Waller on the Cowboys and Dalton Schultz on the Raiders, would they be different? Yeah, give me a while. Would Foster Moreau be ahead of Dalton Schultz? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just. No, I, I know. I, Schultz is one of those guys, especially with Schultz moving kind of away from Dallas. Like, with the, he wants an extension. You know what I mean? He wants a contract. And he's just one of those guys where if he wasn't, if he was not with Dallas, you'd probably not be viewing him anywhere near the same in this trade. You know what I mean? So It'd probably be different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I, I'd rather just buy buy on Waller's talent, but Waller is like four years older than Schultz, so I can understand that being a decent pivot. I can see both sides. Darren Waller or the 103, and this is a 1.75 tight end premium, and you are contending. It's a good trade. I think we I think I would probably lean the 103 because it's a little more liquid. Like I could probably turn around and trade the 103 and maybe a third or a 24 second and get Kelsey. 
Uh, well, yeah, probably. So it's like, almost like I'd give me two years of Kelsey maybe, and it's probably going to outproduce Waller. But I, I can see both sides if you really wanted that tight end advantage. Yeah, that'd be hard to let go of Waller. 1.75 tight end premium. Who's my backup tight end? Is it Dalton Schultz? If it's Dalton Schultz, I'm making the deal. <laughs> so in a 1.75 tight end premium, are you going Darren Waller and a 23 first or Mr. Kyle Pitts? Oh, that's, that's Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I think Pitts is uh, Pitts is like one of the most insulated assets, you know, especially in that premium where, yeah. you know, it's going to, you can lock down the position and probably still, if you have an extra one, you could still flex and it still feels pretty comfortable. Yeah, I think I'd go Pitts. What, what would you add, Shane? At least another first. Hmm. At least another That's in your inbox, first. 223 first and Waller and you give up Pitts. Could you, could you stomach clicking accept? Stomach? Yes. Would I do it? Still not sure because Pitts, uh, as I've talked about, especially in 1.75 at that point, outside of the quarterbacks, he's the most valuable fan dynasty asset um, in 1.75 and above. I'll take him over Chase, Jefferson, basically, well, literally anyone except for the quarterbacks, the top what, six quarterbacks or so. I could do a lot of damage with those 23 first, but it wouldn't be an auto except like pretty much any player. Um, you make that offer for any other player. And I could almost guarantee you that I would hit accept with Pitts. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, that's how you get me on trades. Because like, if you put that in my inbox and I had Pitts, yeah, knowing I know the right process, but I also know like down the road I might regret that trade. You know what I mean? And I'd rather have the Pitts share. But I think it comes down to with Pitts, what is the most insulated asset in Dynasty worth if you're never going to put it on the market? Like you're going to have it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. With, with Jason Jefferson, they could maybe get hurt, have a little bit of a down year, and they could move back to the pack because we're, we know there's so many receivers that are constantly jumping up, you know, and having big seasons. Whereas I, we, we're not going to see probably another Pitts come into the league while he's still playing. You know, it's going to be very rare. There's not really yeah. a tight end. There's not really a tight end in his range where you're like, okay, he's the next Pitts. Like it's you just not something you're going to bank on. So, man, that's I feel if you put that in my inbox, though, that'd be hard for me to turn it down, especially in a 12 teamer where I'm now banking. Probably I now have two, you know, three of the 12, 23 first. Man. Yeah, I think for me, if it's um, what did I start at? Darren Waller in a 23 first or pits. I think I would want to do Darren Waller, 23 first, and I'd also want to get way better at the running back position or something like that. So if I give up um, Kyle Pitts and Miles Sanders, and then I get Darren Waller at 23 first and DeAndre Swift, you know, so if I'm doing a big color up at a different position and getting Waller in the first. Yeah, know. that's that's interesting though because then it be, basically becomes swift for miles and a 23 first which actually isn't a terrible deal in itself you know what i mean and i don't think if you add say you have pits and you go out and you say i'm trading him away tonight and it's a 1.75 ppr and you start <laughs> throwing out <laughs> and you start throwing out you're asking for kelsey and waller because those are probably the, the two like older tight ends that people may want to move and you also need a 23 first and you also need like Javante or Brees Hall. Like nobody's accepting that. You know what I mean? Like if I put that in your inbox, no, nobody's going to accept that. Yet that's probably what Pitts is worth on the market. He's a, he's a very hard player to value.